Hey everybody, it's Marcus from the V2V Podcast, and tonight we have something special for you. A friend of the show, Tracy Dick, has put together a collection of a bunch of funny stories from her school days. I think you're really going to enjoy this and find it hilarious. Let's go. One. Now that's what I call stupid. In my junior year of high school, this guy asked me on a date. He rented a red box movie and made a pizza. We were watching the movie and the oven beat so the pizza was done. He looked me dead in the eye and said, this is the worst part. I then watched this boy open the oven and pull the pizza out with his bare hands, rack and all, screaming at the top of his lungs. We never had a second date. 2. The fake report card. I failed the first quarter of a class in middle school, so I made a fake report card. I did this every quarter that year. I forgot that they mail home the end of year cards, and my mom got it before I could intercept with my fake. She was pissed at the school for their error. The teacher also retired that year and had already thrown out his records, so they had to take my mother's proof, the fake ones I made throughout the year, and correct the mistake. I've never told her the truth. 3. All the fish. I went to this girl's party the week after she beat the shit out of my friend. While everyone was getting trashed, I went around putting tuna inside all the curtain rods and so like weeks went by and they couldn't figure out why the house smelled like festering death. They caught me through this video where these guys at the party were singing Beyonce while I was in the background with a can of tuna. 4. How to win at video games When I was little, I would go on Nickelodeon.com all the time and they had this game similar to Club Penguin, except it was called Nicktropolis. And if you forgot your password, a security question you could choose was what is your right color? And if you got it right it would tell you your password. So I would go to popular locations in Nicktropolis and write down random usernames who were also in those areas. And then I would log out and type in the username as if it were my own and see which of these usernames had a security question set to what is your eye color? Which was most of them, since it was easy and we were all kids. I would then try either brown, blue, or green, and always get in. Then I would go to their house and send all of their furniture and decorations to my own accounts. And if I didn't want it, I could sell it for money. 5. Drama at my drama class. One time my drama class's teacher had gone home sick so we were just put in a classroom with a movie to entertain us for the period when an alarm went off. None of us were sure if it was the fire alarm or the lockdown alarm, so we all head out into the hall to check and no one's out there, so we head back in and climb under our desks as is lockdown procedure. Cut to an hour or so later when a teacher bursts in and nearly dies of relief because the school was on fire and we were the only students not accounted for and half the faculty and fire department had been searching for us for ages. Literally, the whole school had filled with smoke while we'd kept super safe under our wooden desks. 6. I drew a penis with a glue stick on the whiteboard. My whole class once got detention because I drew a penis with a glue stick on the whiteboard and when the teacher went to wipe off the board all the fluff came off and stuck to the glue. I never got in 
trouble for it because my whole class found it too funny to tell the teacher it was me. 7. The day my teacher stole my headphones, during my sophomore year of high school, we were doing silent work and my history teacher said that we could listen to music but if it was too loud he would break our headphones. So I'm doing my work quietly with my music on low, and this obnoxious kid sitting next to me had his music really loud. I could hear it over my music but ignored it. My teacher thought it was me. So he comes up to me and ripped my brand new Apple headphones, looking ruthless. He suddenly realized it was the guy next to me and he was completely embarrassed. He came in the next day with a new pair and an apology note taped to them. He couldn't look me in the eye for the rest of the year. 8. Oh, Seaman, when I was in high school, I was pretty quiet around people who weren't my friends. The high school's wrestling coach also taught geometry, and he was my teacher. This resulted in a lot of wrestlers skipping class and barging into our classroom to hang out and not get in trouble. One day, seven wrestlers come in yelling about new wrestling uniforms, and how excited they were. When they go over and pull out the uniforms, the whole class is kind of side-eyeing them. Even without what I mention next, the suits look funny. I mean, it's tight royal blue spandex with a suspender style top. Absolutely funny already. But the wrestlers grab the uniforms and rush out of the room to go change in the bathroom, and come back to show them off. Which is also hysterical because spandex hides nothing, you could see all of their junk. Anyway, we live in a town called Ocean City. It's commonly abbreviated as OC. On the back of the spandex uniform, it says Ocean City Men in large letters. Except, they used the abbreviation. On the back, it says OC men, which isn't awful, but then I sound it out in my head. OC men. Oh, semen. I almost spit out the water I was drinking. I looked around frantically, trying to find out who I can tell, because I didn't have any friends to tell in this class. I turned to the girl next to me, and I had no idea who she was and had never talked to her before. I told her what I found and we both cracked up. The whole time she saw me as the quiet teacher's pet who was shy as hell. The first words out of my mouth were it says oh semen. We've been best friends for seven years now. Nine. Ow. My shit. When I was a kid, I was always excited to learn new vocabulary. When I was in first grade, my teacher taught me that shin was another word for leg. Later that day, I was walking with my mom, when I tripped and hit my leg on the ground really hard. I yelled out ow, my shin although my mom heard ow, my shit. She started yelling about how that was a bad word and we didn't say that word, and she was going to wash my mouth out with soap. I was a crying, bawling mess of a child, to the point I was doing that weird cry, stutter, hiccup noise. She paused in berating me and said who taught you that word? Of course. I told the truth and said M.M. my teacher T.T.T. taught me that word. And she started ranting about how she was going to call the school and get that teacher yelled at. I tried to explain, 
TJ teacher said that Shin meant like I'm so sorry Elena Nini never say it again. My mom got quiet and realized her mistake. What did you say? Of course I started crying harder and I said no it's just a test you're going to wash my mouth out with soap again. When I finally calmed down enough to say it again, my mom apologized and to this day I always say shin loudly just to see her face blush. 10. I swear to god he levitated. I have a friend who I've known since I was very little. One day, when he was six, I was at his house when he got this absolutely god-awful stomach pain. I mean, he was literally writhing in pain. So, his mom took him to the doctor's office, where the doctor took one look and told her to take him to the ER. She feared something along the lines of an intestinal rupture. About halfway to the hospital, my friend suddenly let rip the loudest, most powerful fart any of us had ever heard. I swear to God he levitated. We thought the upholstery in the car seat had ripped. After a good 30 seconds of intense farting, he looked at his mom and said, I feel all better now. 11. We don't have a fucking doorbell, so a couple years I moved out of state with a boyfriend. Was super excited about it but with reason had anxiety about being so far from friends and family. One of the ways my anxiety was coming out was with nightmares and night terrors. I'd wake up violently sitting up in a cold sweat, gasping and whatnot. On one particular night I had woken up the sound of our doorbell ringing, which at four in the morning is fucking nerve wracking. So I shook my boyfriend fully awake and told him I heard the doorbell and to go check it because I was scared. He quickly jumps up puts on clothes and grabs a bat, goes all the way to the front door and opens it. I, scared shitlias, am peeking around the corner watching it all go down. I see him step outside and I nervously await the verdict of the situation when I hear him call out to me, babe, and I respond real shaky, yes? He stands in the doorway with a real frustrated tired look in his eyes and says, We don't have a fucking doorbell. 12. The whole school thought I was going to star on Drake and Josh. In second grade, I told everyone that I was leaving school before next semester to move to Hollywood to play Megan's cousin from Vermont on Drake and Josh U. I just told my best friend, but then the whole school found out. I had people coming up to me and asking me for my autograph and a teacher even asked for a picture with me. When I showed up on the first day of school in third grade, I told everyone that the show was going off the air after the season finished, even though I had no knowledge of when it was ending and so they wouldn't need me. And the show ended after that season and everyone believed me up until like 6th grade but now my best friend will never let me forget about it and I'm so angry. 13. Classroom chaos, so in 8th grade I used to read during class a lot. At the time I was reading an Artemis Fowl book, and for some reason I had two copies of the same book. So one day in my English class we were reading this other book, which I had already finished reading three days earlier. I was reading my own book and when it was finally my turn to read, I had no idea where we were. So the teacher took my book away. I found my spot, read the part and passed it 
to the next person to start reading. So after I read my part, I took out my second copy of Artemis and picked up right where I left off. Skip a few minutes ahead, gets back to my turn to read, and again I don't know where we are. So teacher takes a look at me, sees the book in my hands, then back to her desk obviously confused for a second. But shrugs it off knowing it's me she's dealing with. I've caused similar problems like this before, takes my second book and puts it on her desk, and makes me read my part. Now my friend that sat two chairs down from me was also reading Artemis at the same time as me and with a quick look to him he knew exactly what I was planning. He took it out and passed it over without hesitation. I opened to a random spot and just pretended like I was reading. At this point it was just a mess with my teacher. So skip forward again and my teacher sees me with the book again and says, How many of those do you have? I gave my smart ass remark as enough. She took away that book, too. But now at this point I was out of books, and the rest of my class knew it. But the teacher didn't know I was out. So she continued with her lesson and another friend of mine took two of her books and switched out two of the Artemis books on her desk to make them look like they were still there. He passed the books slowly around the room, one at a time, until they were back to me. Then I took one out, opened to a random spot and just kept it open, waiting to get caught. I silently signaled to a few people in class and they started laughing. The teacher looked at what they were laughing at and saw me with yet another book. She looked at her desk where there were seemingly three Artemis books and saw me with a fourth. She took it, walked back to her desk, put it down, turned around, and saw me with the second book that got taken on my desk. The teacher thought she was going to win this game but underestimated my teamwork with my classmates. So the second she came over to me to take the seemingly fifth book, another classmate took back the other two books from her desk and split them up, sending one to me one way, and the other another way. The teacher was very flustered and laughing hysterically at this point and there was no more teaching going on. The entire class was also going ballistic trying to see who would win. It was just a game of how many books does this one eighth grader have? So at the end of the class she thought she had taken 11 books from me. I took pity on her and told her what was really happening. I told her that I had already read the first book, and all the teamwork that went on. We were both laughing and making jokes. In the end she agreed to let me read my own books as long as I kept track of the actual book we were reading. Meaning, I asked the person next to me tell me when it's my turn and they point out my spot to read so I don't actually have to keep track. 14. Victoria's no longer a secret, so my oldest brother Ethan doesn't like wearing pants while at home. He wears boxers, because he's a gentleman, but refuses to wear pants. So one day we're all just chilling on the couch when Ethan comes in wearing his boxers. My younger brother Eric asks if he can take off his pants too and Ethan says yeah, just make sure you have clean underwear on. Eric leaves the room, goes upstairs, comes back three or four minutes later without pants in my underwear, and not 
just any underwear, Victoria's Secret, my Victoria's Secret, only girl in the family. Ethan is laughing his ass off, Nate, next oldest brother, is rolling on the floor, and I'm just sitting there like WTF. My dad chooses the best time to come in with guests, when one of his 10 year old sons is standing in the living room wearing his only daughter's frilly Victoria's Secrets, his oldest isn't wearing pants, and the other two sons are on the floor dying. The neighbors haven't come over since. 15. My favorite teacher. One time in 6th grade we were at recess and while I was running to my friends, I just so happened to kick a huge rock. Keep in mind, I was wearing flip-flops so it hurt like hell, and without thinking, I shouted at the top of my lungs motherfucker. And with my god-awful luck, my math teacher was sitting at the bench right beside me. He then took me inside to what I thought was yell at me but he just couldn't stop laughing and sent me back outside with a little candy bar. He is still my favorite teacher I've ever had. 16. Lotion Boy One time in my chemistry class, while the teacher was talking, this guy asked loudly, Does anyone have any lotion? The teacher stopped talking as some girl gave him some hand lotion. The guy proceeds to slowly rub the lotion on his face as the whole class watches him in confusion. The teacher asks him what he's doing, and he responds with I forgot to moisturize this morning and puts even more on his face. The teacher asks him to go to the hall to finish his moisturizing because he's being a distraction, and after about 10 minutes he still hasn't come back in, so someone opens the door to check and he's still smearing lotion all over his face. He finally comes back in and hands the girl her lotion, and he's used up half of it. Now people call him Lotion Boy. 17. I never got to eat my Pringles. Okay, so this was in 4th grade, and I was in this class with all these dumbass kids. Here's the backstory. My parents usually packed me fruit for a snack, but on this day they packed me like half of the leftover Pringles from the day before. You know, in that cylinder container. I was really excited since I love Pringles. But when recess came around so I could take my Pringles and go eat it outside, they weren't in my bag. I started scoping the area, trying to find my Pringles. I call the teacher, she tries to find them but she can't either. Then this thought comes to my mind. What if Moira stole light tea? Moira was this chubby girl in my class that literally always wore this purple princess dress that should be classified as a bad Halloween costume, seriously, and was known for being a bitch. Being the judgmental 9 to 10 year old I was, I straight out concluded that she must have stolen my damn Pringles. I just tell my teacher, well too bad, I'll just go out for recess now. It was just Pringles, being a little angel. So I stomp out of the class and start searching for Moira. I'm talking checking areas, finding witnesses, wasting my time. So after a solid 10 minutes, I found a group of these kids crowded at the side of one of the portable classrooms. I rush over to see what it is. The kids were eating Pringles. Barbecue flavored Pringles. My pr
Pringles. I start raging as I smack the Pringles out of the kids' hands and start ripping people away from the main source. And in the middle of all the kids, sat a smug looking Moira with my Pringles. I look all mad and rip the bloody empty container of Pringles out of the damn bitch's filthy hands. By now even dumbass Moira knows what's up, she's a goner. I would have murdered her at the very least, but a supervisor saw us and ran over. Moira was forced to apologize and I was forced to accept her damn apology. I never got to eat my Pringles. To this day I'm sure she fears my cold dead hands ready to rip her lying face off. 18. Why my parents can't take me seriously, so one time I was home alone and it was around dinner time when I decided to make myself something to eat. I opened the freezer and dug around until I found what appeared to be chicken nuggets in an unopened plastic bag that for some reason didn't have any cooking instructions. Thinking that my parents must have thrown away the box for box tops, I called my mom to ask how long and at what temperature to cook chicken nuggets. She told me both of them. I laid out about 20 on a tray and stuck it in the oven, setting the timer before I walked out of the kitchen. When it was almost time to get my chicken nuggets, I walked into a cinnamon scented kitchen. I searched all over that kitchen, trying to find the cinnamon scent, leading me to the oven. I decided to turn on the oven light to see if maybe my mom had stuck some cookies in the oven and forgot to bake them, but instead, I find that the tray my chicken nuggets were on has cookies on it instead. As I'm trying to process what just happened, I hear the front door open and my mom shout delightedly, Ooh, what is that smell? She walks into the kitchen and catches my confused expression. That's when the spark ignited and she realized exactly what had happened. Somehow in some form, I had accidentally baked snickerdoodles. And that is why my parents can never take my cooking seriously. 19. Painting a roller coaster. So in my junior year of high school I got a project to make a roller coaster for my physics class. Everything was going fine until the day my partner and I had to paint the thing. We were in my garage spray painting the tubes and these two guys come marching up to the house across the street and start yelling at the top of their lungs, beating on the door. Now let me say in my defense the neighborhood I lived in was in South Dallas and it's still not a safe place. Well I called the police, closed the garage and parked myself in front of the dining room window. Long story short the police, showed up in full gear broke down the door and brought out the two boys at gunpoint. And that's the story of how my entire block found out that the abandoned house had new owners. 20. Jellyfish Fiasco so when I was like 9 I went to this aquarium thing and it was a pretty amusing trip overall. But then suddenly I just kind of saw these jellyfish without any tentacles floating around in the water and was like oh cool. The next day at school, the teacher asked us what we had done over the weekend. Now normally I never raised my hand. But I did this time. I fucking did it this time. The worst possible time. So I raised my hand and everyone was obviously shocked to see my hand up in the air so the teacher said yes. And after confirming the fact that she picked me I said. 
I saw this jellyfish in the aquarium and I thought it was really cool because it didn't have any testicles. And then like the classroom just emerged with so much laughter and I had no clue what was going on so I pleaded my friend to explain what was so funny I mean even the teacher was laughing and I was going WTF. So eventually my friend explained to me, it literally took two hours of convincing, and then no FCI was pretty embarrassed but the thing is the fucking teacher then asked me if she could tell this to the other teachers and that's the story of how I switched schools. 21. 8th grade games, so when I was in the 8th grade, science class was the most boring hours of my life. Everyone would play games on their computers, we used computers to take notes, but would play them in a super sneaky manner, volume down, looking at the board so it looks like you're taking notes, etc. I wasn't one for playing games during class but I was so bored, so I searched up Pac-Man on Google and started playing. I didn't know what else to play. So I started playing and just my luck I didn't check how high my volume was, it was all the way up. I started panicking because the game noises were excruciatingly loud. I kept playing and got eaten by a ghost almost after I pressed the start button. My hands were shaking like crazy. My strict science teacher looked me straight in the eye. 22. I literally fell for him. Since my crush sits behind me in class, when we stood up to do the pledge I stood up too fast and I stumbled over to him so to not fall on the ground I reached to grab his desk but I accidentally grabbed him and I ended up falling on top of him and we both screamed. Luckily I didn't hurt or crush him. My teacher and everyone else started laughing and I got so red afterwards. Now when we stand up for the pledge, he moves all the way to the back of the room away from me. 23. 5th grade teacher, in 5th grade, my teacher loathed me. She would do anything to make me cry and sent me to the principal's office any chance she got. Don't believe me? I'm left-handed. So still, to this day, I get my hands confused. On this particular day, we were doing the Pledge of Allegiance and I had put my left hand to my chest. It's supposed to be your right hand over your heart. She got mad at me, telling me that I wasn't being patriotic and sent me to the principal's office. The principal and I were quite acquainted at this point and so I told her why I was sent back to her office again. And she laughed. And laughed. I didn't find it funny at all. I mean all the kids in my school thought I was a delinquent so they didn't want to be my friend. My principal wrote on the back of my hands, Eleanor. What I didn't realize was that she wrote L on my right hand and R on my left hand. She did the same to hers. Then, she walked me back to the classroom and made our whole class redo the pledge with our right hand, with me leading the class, and it was one of the happiest moments of my elementary experience. 24. In the closet, okay, so one time when I was really little I had a best friend who was kinda strange but so my mom got to call one day asking if she was over at my house because they couldn't find her and so they call again about two hours later to ask if we could help look for her and so about three hours of looking 
We had basically covered the entire neighborhood and they were about to call the police and we decided to check their house one more time and my mom went into her room and found her completely naked and sleeping on the top of a super tall shelf in her closet. 25. Cringy. My best friend and I are super weird, and whenever either of us see an attractive person we tend to take a picture of them and send it to each other, because why not? Anyway, I was on a cruise ship with my grandparents, and I spot this super cute guy a couple years older than me. Naturally, I freak out a little, and I whip out my phone. Bear in mind I'm sat next to my grandparents in the middle of a crowded lobby. So I open my camera, take a picture and guess what? The fucking flash was on, wasn't I T? I make eye contact with us cute guy, look at my grandparents who both look extremely disappointed, and a few other people are looking at me. Obviously I left the room immediately. 26. Sporting goods. So I have this health teacher who is really insane about exercise. This woman has done Ironman triathlons, and talks about going to the YMCA at 5am. Yeah she's crazy. Basically we have this project to pick a health goal to do for a month. Things like drinking water or doing squats. For this you need some motivation so we were talking about physical things to reward ourselves with. She decided to tell us about her sporting goods fetish, where she goes into a store and buys a bunch of gear like they were books. In the middle of this she suddenly goes, I really like dicks. Realizing what she just said, she turned red and in a more quiet voice goes, please don't tell your parents. 27. How bugs feel, when I was about 5 sixths my mom and stepdad bought my sister and I bikes for Easter. After church they were like do you want to learn how to ride them, and I was like, duh. I had finally gotten the hang of it and I was riding around the circle showing off, and my mom was like say cheese so I look over at her for a second and I fucking ram into a car at full speed. A parked car that I didn't even see, like at all. So I just rammed into this car and I fell off my bike and I was crying and all I could think about was this must be how bugs feel like they're flying around living life and then splat. Looking back that was my first existential crisis. 28. In dreams, I've always had super vivid dreams and it takes me a while after waking up to realize that they're real. Sometimes, it's a disappointment but generally I just forget about it and move on. Now, in 6th grade I had one really close friend who I never actually got into a fight with. One night, I had a really vivid dream where my friend and I had this huge falling out over something that I can't even remember now. I was really good at holding grudges because I was not a forgiving child, so for three weeks I completely ignored my best friend in anger to the point where she started crying in front of the teacher and he asked what was going on. Of course, as I'm telling this story I realize the events were super weird and that it was all a dream. I fall silent and just look at my friend who's still extremely upset and don't know what to say because I had fucked up so badly. 29. Sniffing candles with my best friend. So my best friend and I were in a supermarket and there were a lot of new candles. 
They all smelled strange, so we started to think about names we could give them. Grandma's toilet cleaning agent or STH like this. Whatever I guess we sniffed much candles because we started laughing very hard and I lay on the floor and my best friend fell into the pasta shelf which made us laugh even more and louder and people were already staring at us. Suddenly my brother's best friend stood behind us and from this day he's thinking that I'm taking drugs. I don't. I just sniff candles with my best friend to burst out in laughter. 30. Skull lover. So I was sitting at a lecture when I feel like being stared at, and in the corner of my eye I see this really handsome guy, who's literally just staring at me. I don't think much of it and continue to listen to the professor. After the lecture the guy comes up to me, and lays his hand on head and I'm like ee what are you doing and he stares me dead in the eyes and says I've never seen such a gorgeous skull and then he turns around and leaves. 31. All glowed up, after the final bell, my friend and I were walking to our buses after school through a crowded hallway. We were talking about childhood and reminiscing about old memories, and we somehow started talking about which people became hot since middle school. My friend mentioned this guy named Keenan and I said yeah, he is pretty hot now, and my friend practically screamed dude he glowed up so hard. Glowed up means I guess like, someone became attractive. Anyway, right as she said that she turned her head and he was right behind us. This is so so very cliche but I swear to god there he was. Anyway, right as she saw him she screamed oh. He's right there. And of course he heard her, but it was so awkward so he just walked past us looking down at his phone and my friend fell on the ground from embarrassment. 32. Chinese class. I took Chinese at school as a freshman. On one particular day, we didn't have anything to do in class since we had gone through the whole curriculum for the semester. Our teacher wanted us to watch a Chinese movie in that free time, and I just so happened to watch one recently on YouTube. I offered to find it, and my teacher let me use her computer, that was connected to a Promethean board so that the whole class could see what I was doing on the screen. After a couple of minutes of searching, I couldn't find the movie since I didn't know the exact title, so I logged into my YouTube account and decided to find it in my history. When I opened my history I was mortified since stupid me had forgotten that being the awkward virgin that I was at the time I had searched up tutorials on kissing and making out that previous night. The whole class was hysterically laughing. My teacher was extremely confused, and I almost cried as I scrolled past all the kissing tutorials and finally found the movie. I went back to my seat and didn't speak to anyone in class for the rest of the week. I still haven't lived it down. Exploded everything.
started running out the door and my sister followed me behind and was chasing after me. She asked me where I was going so I started running as fast as I could screaming. We have to get home, I'm not gonna make it. I need to see, why can't I see? Keep in mind that it's like midnight right about now but I'm running and halfway through screaming. I stepped inside a pothole in my neighbor's lawn and completely fell in mud but I got right back up and kept running, muddy as hell, trying to get to my house while my sister was dying from laughter behind me. That's not even the sad part. The sad part is my friend's phone died so I just sat there with mud all over me at the dining room table staring at my blank phone just waiting. I waited for almost two hours, refusing to take a shower even though the mud was starting to dry up. This was two years ago and to this day every time my sister sees the pothole she starts dying from laughter. 35. The toilet phase. When I was younger, around three or four years old, I had a phase of flushing things down the toilet. I would flush McDonald's toys I didn't want any more or change I had found in my room. The biggest and most hilarious thing I ever dumped was a gallon of milk. One day I was bored and was looking around in the fridge low and behold there it was, a new gallon of milk. My tiny body dragged the bottle on the floor all the way to the bathroom. I opened the cap, let it go into the toilet, and flushed. I thought I was smart enough to let it go unnoticed but I'll never forget what my dad yelled out when he walked in. Why in the hell is the water white? My mom found the empty carton and just stared at me. 36. My mom's thong. One day when I was three I decided I wanted to be like my mom and wear big girl panties. I sneakily went through her drawer and grabbed the first thing I could find, a thong. I didn't know what it was at the time. She didn't know until we went to breakfast with some friends and took me to the bathroom. She still won't let me live it down. 37. Slappy Trails One time in fifth grade, I was walking back to class from the bathroom. Before I continue, I should specify two things. 1. My classroom was literally just around the corner from the bathroom, next to the lockers. 2. There was a boy that I had a crush on for the past year in my class. Now for whatever reason, I was swinging my arms around in a wild half-wind mid-motion. Don't ask me why, I was just filled with childlike glee I guess. So there I was, swinging my arms dramatically, then just when I got to the corner. Smack. I had accidentally slapped someone in the face. It took me a second to realize who it was, my crush. I was mortified but he just started laughing. To this day I can probably cite that as one of my top clumsy slash socially inept moments. 38. The ramen incident. I have decided to remain anonymous to protect my identity from the foolishness. Last night, I became hungry and decided to make some ramen. I removed the various packets from the bowl, added the flavor and vegetables, then put the bowl in the microwave. After about a minute or two, I realized something was wrong. A terrible burning smell had filled my kitchen. I opened the door to my microwave and, lo and behold, I had 
water. There was some smoke coming from the bowl. Not wanting to waste the ramen, I went to the sink and added water, which filled the room in acrid smoke for several seconds. I then returned the bowl to the microwave and cooked it for two more minutes before attempting to eat it. Well, it went okay for a little while, until I discovered a globule of blackened noodles which had turned into some sort of strange crystalline substance yet seen in nature by humankind. I had a change of heart. 39. First phone accident. When I was in the sixth grade my parents decided I should get my first cell phone because I was going to middle school now and things were different. It was a pink little slide phone where you'd slide it sideways and have the texting keyboard and all. I took decent care of my phone and never needed a replacement. Well, flash forward to Memorial Day weekend. My family and another family went camping up in Pennsylvania for the weekend. Well, one of the days we were up there my buddy. Oliver, and I decided to take the kayaks out on the lake. Genius me, decided she wanted to listen to the four Selena Gomez songs I had on my phone. I thought it would be a brilliant idea to put my phone in a plastic bag to protect it from the water. When we got back from kayaking I took my phone out only to find the bag was submerged in water. We had no rice or anything to save my phone so we tried laying it out to dry. Not even 15 minutes later it starts down pouring destroying my phone even more. My mom ended up giving me her first flip phone which didn't even have a camera or the option to have music or photos transferred. Lesson learned. 40. Little thief, when I was around 4 or 5 I was with my mom at this store buying some Christmas gifts. As we were leaving I saw these little plushy dinosaurs that fit perfectly in my hands. I grabbed two of them and stashed one in each of my pockets. My pockets were so small that they made me look like I had two rumors on each of my hips. I still remember the rush of energy I got from actually leaving the store undetected. Well, when my mom and I got to the car, she found them and pulled the store back and made me apologize. I had the absolute worst social anxiety when I was a kid so I was absolutely sobbing, telling this poor employee how horrible a person I was. Like I was having a mental breakdown, it was so bad my mom apologized to me afterwards and bought me a nice milkshake. 41. Driver's license, so I was at the local DMV to get my driver's license when my dad pissed off the lady at the counter. Turns out she was the lady that had to do the actual road test with me. We get in the car and I thought I was doing pretty well, until she starts freaking out. She has me pull over, tells me I'm the worst drive ever. After yelling at me, she demands I go back to the DMV, and the rest of the time she is on her phone. When we get there, there is a state trooper waiting for me. Gives me a field sobriety test. Literally had to take a sobriety test when I tried to get my license. At least I passed one test that day. 42. That one time I got lost. So about a year ago, I was in phys. Ed class. And we went around the neighborhood for a jog at the beginning of each class. I hadn't done it before because of medical reasons, but the teacher evidently forgot about it.
about it. I'm incredibly bad with directions and easily distracted, so I lost sight of the rest of the group and went completely the wrong way. I ended up being lost for two and a half hours. The best part is that I single-handedly changed my school's phase. Ed Policy 43. Popcorn, my sister, mother, and I were waiting in a long line at the Sam's Club food court. The entire time I was waiting, I was mentally rehearsing what my order would be one slice of cheese pizza please. My mind was repeatedly screaming at me. When we got up to the cashier to pay, I got distracted by his cuteness so instead of asking for the pizza, I confidently said one popcorn please, which Sam's Club Food Court has none of. Once I realized my mistake, I screamed out no, loud enough for 50 people to look at me. Embarrassed, I ran away and my mom and sister had to bring me the slice of pizza from my finding place in the freezer section. To this day, I beg people to order for me when anyone remotely attractive is working the cash register. 44. Fifty Shades of Butt So to begin my story I should tell you that I work at a medical spa as front desk and my job entails mostly computer and customer service related tasks. However, I am also there to assist the on-shift technician, obviously not with the lasers as I am not certified, but with well, helping shaving clients to prepare them for their treatment. So this particular Saturday I was asked to help shave a client's back, which was fine it's part of my job and I just needed to be professional about it and it's thing I've unfortunately had to do before as well so no big deal right? Wrong. So I do the usual I put on my gloves grab a razor and begin assisting the tech however much to my surprise and displeasure. The tech suddenly pulls down the client's pants and underwear to which I am greeted with a hairy behind. It is all I can do in my power to keep from laughing from sheer shock. I'll spare you the details but let's just say it was not totally normal colored. Trying to stay professional I then had to proceed and hold the client's butt cheek to want to shave it. I finished as through and quick as I possibly could and booked it the hell out of the room. Later when I had to book the client's next appointment neither of us could look the other in the eye because of that traumatizing encounter. I will probably never be able to live down the moment I looked at the multicolored butt right in the crack. 45. Thanks, Mrs. Miller. You the best. One time way back in 6th grade math class I had to fart really bad. Me being the idiot that I am decided that it would be silent. Big surprise it wasn't. The only person talking was the teacher and she was interrupted by freaking cannon fire farts. She said she was disappointed I couldn't hold it in and proceeded to tell a story of how she taught a famous athlete who did nearly the same thing. 46. Weed birthday. Last year, during class, my algebra teacher let us listen to music while we did our classwork and whatnot. So, I was just jamming. Being super confused on this one problem and I look up from my paper to ask my friend how to do it and everyone is intensely looking back and forth between me and another girl with their fingers on their noses. As you can imagine, I was super confused. So, naturally, I also put my finger on my nose. Every 
Everybody yelled oh and turns out, it was a nose ghost thing and the other girl had to ask the teacher if she'd ever smoked weed on her birthday because it was 4.20. 47. That time in freshman year, so I was always the person who'd try to leave class really fast so I wouldn't always be paying attention to some very crucial surroundings. So I'm sitting in math class where our teacher makes us put our book bags against the wall to the side of the room. The bell rings and being the kid that wants to get out I don't bother putting all my stuff away and I just grab my red backpack and I'm gone. I get all the way to my science class and set the book bag at my desk when lo and behold it's not my backpack. It's another also red backpack that I had mistakenly took in my rush to get to science. So I have this mini freak out at my friend Seth sitting next to me. As a freshman and quite socially inept I decide not to really do anything about it until lunch which was next block. I had some paper in my arms from last class so I decided to use those and figure out everything during lunch instead of making a scene at like literally the first week of my high school career. So we go into science class and since it's the first week we're always doing the scientific method lesson before anything else. My teacher asks the class for a problem we can apply to it right? Well guess who raises his hand? Seth. Now my teacher adored Seth so he gets called on and you know what his answer was? What if you accidentally stole someone's backpack? Like, you thought it was yours and you didn't mean to take it and my teacher was like why don't you tell me more about this so Seth goes oh it's not my problem it's hers and points to me. Complete mortification. And even then my teacher was confused thinking I had just come up with the problem but no. Only if. I hold up the stolen backpack and my teacher had the most dumbfounded look like I have never encountered someone that failed at life more than you. So he calls my math teacher yada yada I get my backpack. The worst part? We ended up continuing with that scenario and took notes on the scientific method using the very problem that I had created. My hypothesis? If I wasn't a complete fail then I'd be able to get my own back properly. 48. Virtual reality self-prostitution. I used to play a game called Fantasy Star Universe and I would be my own pimp and my own hoe. I had my main account, let's call him Dude Man, and my hoe account, let's call her Gal Pig. So there was like the main floor area and people would like try to sell nudes for money, in game, not IRL, and I was like nobody actually does that, do they? So I made Gal Kick and I took off her clothes so she was in her underwear, and then I said one thing on the main floor and some guy took the bait right away. He invited me back to his house and I was like oh god I'm sorry, I'm new to this, how do you transfer money? And he did it to show me how. And then he asked for my character to teabag his and moan into the mic, and I was like a 15 year old boy, so instead, I just blocked him and took the money. That's when I realized my one. I did it for months and I transfer the money from Gal Kick to Dude Man and all my friends wondered how I had super good gear. I miss that game every day. 49. A full sun. After an exhausting, week-long festival I was getting a lift back home in a car full of my friends. We were coming up over a mountain road with a really beautiful ocean view just at sunset. I'll never 
forget the outburst that followed when I said wow it's so beautiful, and it's even a full sun. I momentarily forgot that only moons have phases, and that the sun is generally always full. My friends have never let me live it down. 50. Socially awkward fail. So one day I was walking around, just chilling with my friends when I see this guy reading a book. He was new there but the book was a book I read and loved. So naturally I approached this boy hoping to make a new friend and bond over the series. Being the socially awkward fail I am I planned out ahead of time what I'd say, hey, we've, my friends and I, wanted to come over to say hi cause I say you were reading a book I liked and I hope we can talk more in the future. But no. Once we got to him I panicked and just had to blurt out we've come to hello you. And I think my voice cracked and I almost started to cry. Never gonna talk to them again. 51. Don't sit on cold ground. So a couple weeks ago, me and my friends were sitting on this cement kind of pedestal, as we called it. It's basically the steps up to the portable classroom that no one uses, and this weird supply French teacher comes up to us and says, you shouldn't be sitting on this ground, it's too cold and it's bad for your ovaries. I asked her how or why and she said that if children sit on cold ground their ovaries will freeze and that we won't be able to have kids. Now it's an inside joke between us about not sitting on cold ground. 52. Gay teacher. So about a year ago we had to do a speech about something we were passionate about. These would then be recorded to put on the school website. I decided to do one about gay rights as it was not yet legalized in my state. I decided to mention that I was gay during the speech, which wasn't that much of a surprise to people. In the end it went really well. Then a couple of hours later, during lunch I was walking past the staff room to get to the lunch hall when I heard my speech being played. Being curious I stopped and I heard them replay I am gay myself actually a couple of times over. Out of the corner I could see my 6th grade teacher give my computer studies teacher $10. Then suddenly, I sneezed really loudly. The teachers turned around and saw me standing there. My 6th grade teacher has pretty much gotten over it but my computer studies teacher refuses to make eye contact with me. 53. Foreign student trauma. When I first moved from Lithuania to America I was 5 years old and didn't speak any English. On the first day of kindergarten I was crying so much that my teacher picked me up and let me sit on her lap. Meanwhile the rest of the kids sat on the carpet in front of me and watched me cry while she explained to them what was going on in a language I didn't understand. Our school was three buildings put together, and the pickup was at the blue building but my classroom was at the red building, so they put a sign over my neck that said I don't speak English and I'm going to the blue building and sent me away to follow a crowd of other kids. I'm still traumatized. 54. His face looks like the best chair, so there's this really hot kid in my creative writing class. And everyone knows I like him. But one day, he walked in looking like a freaking GQ model, and I accidentally out loud whispered shit, his face looks like the best chair and the girl who sits in front of me turned around and said 
WTH. That's freaky and gross and she moved her seat. She gives me weird looks every time she sees me now. 55. Never wear a dress in Chicago. So when I was younger, my aunt was kind enough to invite me to come along with her to Chicago for my cousin's paintball tournament. I had never been to Chicago before, so naturally I had to go see the big city. Just like any other girl, I wanted to get all dolled up before walking around in front of people. I wore an extremely soft red dress that I was in love with, and some wedges. One thing that Chicago has plenty of is vents, and I ignored them because the ones in my city are never on. This was a mistake, because I just so happened to walk over one that was on. Only to be met with steam hot enough to burn leg hair off, and my dress being blown up to my neck around hundreds of other people. 56. Son of a bitch Adam, I used to babysit this little boy who was a real handful. He was always in trouble and it seemed like every time his dad had to call him it went like this. Dad finds disaster left by Adam. Dad yells out, son of a bitch. Adam. One day I have to pick up Adam's older brother at school. A Catholic school. His teacher, a nun, sees adorable little Adam with his chubby cheeks and face like a cherub and asks him his name and he answers flat out, son of a bitch Adam. 57. As it turns out, I am gay. When I was around nine years old I was starting to get confused about my sexuality so I would always look up are you gay quizzes on our family computer because I was scared and confused. And my mom eventually saw the searches and the history and confronted me about it. I lied about it and said I had accidentally clicked an ad. As it turns out, I am gay.